This is the National Park Overview, Day 13, Leg 13, and the area of operations today is in that rectangular green box. And here's the Google Earth chart for Day 13, Leg 13. Uh, in red, it shows the track, departure on the far right, arrival on the far left, and a note there that I did look for some other boat sites, but I was unsuccessful. Here's the nav chart for the day. Uh, it shows the track uh, for leg 13, departure on the right, arrival on the left. And I did actually look for a couple different places where for boat sites. Uh, but again, I was unsuccessful and ended up at the or, or final arrival point there. This is the final chart in the Avenza app showing the national park details for the leg 13 route that I took from the departure on the right hand side, arrival at Stevens Island over on the far left, and some of the campsites and boat sites in between. All right, here's my birthday stop. <clears throat> I'll take a few shots of the, around the beach area here that I've <clears throat> pulled up on. And uh, saw some bear sign here, scat. But uh, this is an unmarked site. It's not a, a standard boat site. But a nice spot. Unfortunately, there's a lot of, it's too close to the main channel. So there's a lot of boats going by. I just finished dinner, had uh, for birthday, had chicken dinner, grilled chicken, baked beans, fresh salad, and a hot ciabatta roll and white wine. So it was a very nice dinner. I'm not sure if it's any good for tenting because there's no real good flat areas. We'll walk up along the trail here in a bit. And I'll show you where that is. There's this nice rock formation coming out here. There's actually another beach on the other side of that that has more sand. This is, as you can see, is tends to be fairly rocky or pebbly. I'll walk you up the trail. <clears throat> and we'll see what we can find here. There's a pretty established trail, so it's been used quite a bit. Fairly steep in places. And down here you can see the, the other beach. It's kind of nice and sandy. I'm not going to go down there. It's a fairly steep incline, uh, steep path down to the trail or to the beach. But we'll go up this way and get a bird's eye view of the boats. I walked up earlier to check it out. It's kind of dark back here in the forest but as you can see it's you know there's not you could probably find some spots I suppose that are flat enough and open enough to make a set of tent but I think this is more of a boat site at least better suited it's been a nice spot but too much boat traffic Fishermen going by constantly. There's, I think, around the corner a resort, which probably explains some of that. I don't know if they go down there for bait or what. Supplies, who knows. Anyway, there's this nice rock escarpment out here. Walk out this way and I 
I'll show you the show you the spots here. Kind of a neat rock, but it comes out here and takes a rather precipitous fall to the water right there, so I won't go any further. In the morning, I have to head off in that direction right there. Got one more stop before I head home. So one more night and then uh, I get packed up to go home. Hopefully the loading will go not too bad. You can see that that beach right down there is pretty good. A lot more sandy. I just went swimming just now and uh, cleaned up a bit. And I just used my, the other spot wasn't that bad. It was just that you had to wear some, something on your feet because of the rocks. Anyway, we'll walk back this way a little bit. Yeah, a nice shot of the beach and the boat there. Neat spot. All right, we'll head back. I probably won't run the camera the whole time, but uh, this is the channel right out here. The fishermen are going back and forth through this channel. There's two bigger bodies of water on either side, so. I think that's what it's all about. And then right through there is a, on the other side of that little shallow area, there's a bay on the other side. And there's a house site there, a boat house site there. I've added some bonus material uh, about the tow rig I use for towing the kayak, which allows me to reverse the boat without tangling a painter and normally the kayak will just lay along the tube there in re when I'm in reverse. It's very stable while towing, uh, even in rough water, and uh, works very well. It's just a homemade device using some six-foot PVC tubes. The length of the tubes depends on your boat a little bit and how wide your uh, pattern is there for where the hook's up to the stern of the boat. The tubes are just wrapped with foam and then duct tape to secure the, the foam to the tubes. The line itself runs through the tube and then it's fastened on each end with carabiners, one on each end of the tube at the boat and then one at the kayak at the bow. Here's a close up of how the tow rig connects to the boat. There's just a, a braided line that runs through the tube connected to a carabiner and then fastened uh, to the boat with the tow hook that's just, that's provided on the factory version of the Sea Ark John boat. And this is a 24 foot hull. I've covered some of this material earlier in the trip, but there may be some details here in these pictures that are a little better than some of those I had early. Uh, for one thing I'll point out on the uh, left side of the picture there in white is a solar vent that I installed on this boat provides improved ventilation to the cabin. Uh, the, the two uh, solar panels are Blue Eddy, made by Blue Eddy, and they're 120 watts each. They're portable panels, and so I'm fastening them down with just some bungee cords that are actually doubled in order to get enough length. You might be able to buy bungees that are long enough without having to double them, but 
In my case, I had these bungees and I just doubled them to make them work. The Bluetti panels only have two grommets on one end because they're designed to just hang, not to be connected up to a boat like I'm doing. So I did have to add grommets on the opposite end that, that from what you see in this picture. And uh, I just added those and, uh, and so that I can fasten it down on both ends securely. Here's a close-up of the solar panel uh, bungee cord attachment to the boat itself. I used stainless eyes screwed into the exterior frame of the boat all the way around. There's eight of them to uh, fasten down the bungee cords properly. I should add in addition to this that occasionally I'll re, uh, release those bungees and use sandbags and tilt the panels up to, uh, on the roof to line up better with the sun. So I do carry additional sandbags for that purpose to keep them from ending up in the water because the gust of wind can do that. Uh, you need plenty of weight to hold them down because the wind can get uh, pretty strong sometimes up here. 